Rock of the Westies is one of my favorite Elton John albums of all time, and I was really happy to be able to talk to someone who was on that album. Actually, I talked to two people, Kenny Passarelli, the bassist, and Caleb Quay. And uh, one more from that album, Billy Bones is another one. I mean, these are such rocking. And, and listen, I like the rocking side of Elton. I mean, a lot of people say those two last big albums, Blue Moves and Rock of the Westies you were on. To me, I look at that as, as I don't know if he was running out of breath, but he hadn't run out of breath yet. And uh, he was, those were amazing albums to me. Well, that band, that band was, and I say this without any, I mean, no doubt in my mind. That was the most rocking band he ever had. When he switched, when it was Roger Pope, Kenny Passarelli, and he brought me in as well, that rhythm section was the was a powerhouse. I mean, yeah, that was that was Elton that is is rock, and that's what that's something that, as I understand it, he wanted to do at the time. He wanted to to have more infinite, and you know, that's that's why he brought Roger in. Um, Nigel's a great drummer, but Nigel Nigel really is the ballad drummer. He's the less is more drummer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He don't have the chops that Roger does, you know. But Popey, he'll drive it through a brick wall. When you when you came back, what I mean, you talk about that that second chance you had, but by the time you came back for Rock of the Westies, uh-huh. um, what kind of shape were you in there? I mean, were you were you unraveling at, at any point at that point, or before or after? No, uh, Rock of the West is time on top of the world. Okay, we we were just me and Roger Pope. We were just we couldn't believe it. We were loving it. So we were just on fire, just absolutely loving it. When, when you came back for Rock of the Westies and Blue Moves, was there a part of you that when you were in the studio with Elton, did, would, did you ever think back of the, the old Caleb of going, this has really changed because the machine, his machine had gotten so big at that point. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, there was all of that, you know. But, um, but you know, we, we rode with it, you know. We, we rode with it. We were young and we were still in our 20s, you know. So <laughs> we we yeah. were on fire, you know. Yeah. It, it was great. What we really enjoyed was um, just the freedom to be able to, you know, use the studio however we wanted it. And nobody was saying, oh, well, we can't afford that. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. Some Elton John fans did not like Rock of the Westies. It was a little too heavy. It was a little different for Elton John fans. This is part two of our talk on Rock of the Westies, and we touch on the song Feed Me. What about Feed Me? That That's almost jazzy. Dun, 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 you know? Wow. Um, I may have come up with that one. Because that's very jazzy. Yeah, yeah. I most probably come up with that one. And that was also with uh, um, James Newton Howard was playing, um, I think, uh, electric piano on that as well. With, uh, yeah. with uh, uh, you know, we're losing so many people. And I mean, I just turned 60 and I'm going, oh, I better look after myself and all this stuff. I mean, that's just a milestone for me, yeah. for, personally yeah. for me. But yeah. but I look at your life and I'm going, you know, you got this documentary. You seem still as plugged in as you were before. It's almost like you want to tell someone who doesn't know what's around the corner and doesn't have hope for life of going, hey, just just hold on here. You know, your yeah. life has many chapters that's and phases. Right. And you're at this phase which seems, I mean... You know, I, I sometimes looked at a part of my life in the 80s. I'm going, why was I so happy that I'm going, I had hope. I was connected. I was spiritual. I was connected to whoever brought me here. I had all those things. And hey. you have all those things. That's right. That's right. Like a new life. There's, there's so much life in a documentary where you're going, you can share who you are. That's right. That's right. I mean, how yeah. did it feel when you first saw the whole thing? Like from start to finish? The documentary? Yeah. Yeah. Boy, I don't think I could describe that in one word, but most probably at the end, I would have to say thankful. Yeah. Thankful that I came through it and uh, my mind is intact and I'm able to share something. My, my thing is now, if I can, I think I'm supposed to be, and I talk about this in the documentary, because now we're at this, I'm 71 now, I'll be 72 this year. And um, so now I'm at this time of life where it's about leaving a legacy. 
what do we leave behind? Yeah. You know, we're supposed to leave something behind. So this is like the me the messenger thing that you, you you're picking up, I guess. But for me, I think that I'm supposed to be a blessing to people with this gift of, the, of music that's been given to me, and um, and I think with this musical gift, if I can inspire and motivate people to look up in hope instead of looking down in despair, then that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. More from Caleb Quay coming up next week. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music.